would you use indexes? What are the benefits? Um, so it obviously, I say obviously, it drastically improves the performance of your reads. When you're selecting data, uh, when you're joining data, indexes are fantastic at giving you massive speed benefits, as you can see from the, the previous um, demos, previous data I've shown you. Um, if you do indexes correctly, um, you'll get much more efficient use of disk and I.O. and memory. Uh, all of these other systems, which uh, may be your problem, may be the network guy's problem. Um, but you can make everybody's life easier by doing indexes properly. Um, yeah, we've talked about unique indexes. You can force your data integrity through there. Um, you can efficiently sort and group data. We, we've shown the sorting uh, on the reputation. Uh, this data was stored how I wanted it, so we didn't have to sort it. And sorting is expensive in SQL Server. It costs a lot of CPU to, to sort data. Um, yeah, text searching. And um, one thing we haven't talked about is foreign keys. And what a foreign key, I'll, I'll briefly cover it in case people don't know. Um, you've got table A, um, which is a list of orders. Um, and then table B is a list of warehouses that may be containing, that may be fulfilling the order. Um, I don't want to be able to insert data into my orders for a warehouse that doesn't exist. Uh, so what I do is have a warehouse ID column in my orders table. And then I want to point a foreign key to my warehouses table to make sure that that warehouse exists. Uh, if not, it will throw there and go, no, you can't create an order for a warehouse that doesn't exist. Um, now, what happens behind the scenes is uh, SQL Server will go and do a scan of the warehouses table and look for this value. And when it finds it, it'll return it. Grand. Now, if there's no supporting index, we're scanning that entire table because SQL Server just doesn't know uh, whether it exists or not until it checks all the records. If on the warehouses table, we created an index on the warehouse ID, then we've got statistics for that. We've got a histogram. It's much better. It'll go and it'll find that the result much faster than, than doing a full table scan. Even better if you can have it unique. Warehouse ID in the warehouse table is probably unique. Uh, that'll improve efficiency even more. So it, indexes can give you benefits that are outside of just reading the data. Uh, when you're inserting data, it can force the foreign keys to, to just perform much better. There's, there's other examples, but that's a great example. There are some gotchas and some drawbacks to indexes. Um, if I've got a table which has 20 columns and I've got 20 separate indexes, I index every column. Um, what I'm going to have to do every time I insert some data to that table, I have to insert to every index, which also contains this data. So instead of doing one index, uh, one insert onto the table, I'm doing an insert onto the table and also inserting into 20 additional indexes. Um, this is a problem that we see a lot um, with over indexing, and we'll talk about that in a minute, um, but it can because you have to write to multiple places, it can degrade your write performance slightly. It's often greatly balanced with a great read performance, um, but more indexes doesn't come free. There are some things to think about when we talk about write performance. Um, I've mentioned maintenance, and there's a few things that, that you should do as part of your maintenance. Um, uh, later on, I'll suggest a maintenance solution, and we'll talk about that. But the problems you're fi you want to fix with maintenance is um, over time, your data is going to get fragmented. Just like that heap table with data everywhere, uh, any index over time is going to fragment. As you delete data from that index, you insert fresh data into it, you update data in the index, it's going to fragment. Um, and there's not much you can do about that other than reorganizing or rebuilding the index. Um, also, the statistics. We've talked about this, but they can fall out of date. And you want the most up to date statistics because then SQL Server and the, the query analyzer, sorry, the query optimizer um, will come up with the best plan when it comes to uh, how it's going to execute a query. 
Uh, and one thing you should do, and, and again, we'll talk about this, but we should do ongoing index analysis. Um, we, we work with a lot of clients where we go in, um, we run a few tools, I'll talk about some of them later, and, and start with indexes. Uh, and they may not be in the ideal place because um, nobody's done the index analysis before. But what we can't do is go, this is what you need to do, do it, thank you very much. Um, we either do it ourselves or we work with the clients to revisit, uh, do another index analysis in a month, in two months, in six months. Uh, because index requirements change, your, your data will evolve. Uh, chances are the queries that you're writing against the, the SQL Server will change, will evolve. Um, so you, it's, it's an ongoing process, index analysis. It's extra work to keep on top of your indexes. It's very valuable work and it's work I would heavily suggest you should be doing. But it is time out of your day. Um, and extra disk storage. Um, if you create, every time you create an index, it creates a copy of the data that's stored in your table. If that's a large field, then you're creating a copy of a large field. That takes extra disk. Now, nowadays, that's not so much of a problem. Disks are cheap when it comes to, when you think about your SQL Server licensing costs, uh, your memory costs, if you're in the cloud, your hosting costs. Disks are relatively cheap. And relatively fast nowadays um, but it you are causing extra storage requirements when you're creating these indexes